following content is of an adult nature, and it may make some listeners blush, say, oh my God, or even cause offense. Feel free to turn the radio down in three, two, one. Let's talk about sex with Dr. Nikki Goldstein. Dr. Nikki Goldstein is here, and we are talking about all things sex and relationship. Good evening to you. Happy hump day, Dr. Nikki. Happy hump day. It's like our Christmas. Like your new podcast. Thank I like your new you. podcast, by the way, um, on Podcast One, available to download episode. now. Sex and Life. like I've created a new yeah, podcast. So my new episode. The new episode on the podcast um, about women paying for sex. So two things. Uh, why didn't you give me a call? <laughs> and oh God, secondly, if there are men paying for sex and women paying for sex, why not they just meet up and not pay for sex together? Okay. A... Are you offering yourself out there to women that they can pay you for sex? Is that what you were trying to say with that first question? 100%. Okay. You can get a discount rate from Danny Lakey. Call us. Second, it's not about just hooking up in general. It's about being able to have sex in an environment where there's boundaries, there's consent, there's good quality sex. The woman that I interviewed, you know, she had only had one prior sexual experience before she delved into this world. How old was she? Oh, she's in her late 20s. Okay. And what she said about that first experience is that she picked up this guy who was drunk and it was kind of really horrible. And she's like, I just wanted to experiment and have good quality sex and discover my own sexuality. And she's like, I could go out there online or I could go to a bar and I may be faced with the same kind of situation. So for her, she was paying for this guarantee of a good quality time. Mm. With respect. And she also had control. So she was like able to say to these guys, okay, this time I really want to explore vaginal. The next time I really want to explore anal. You know, she was curious about a lot of things. And this was a way she was even getting her education as well mm. by being able to ask these guys all sorts of questions, but also experience it physically. Did you speak to anyone else off the air who has sort of different mindset around paying a guy? For sex and being a female. Yeah, I feel like there's a few stereotypes. I was able to speak to a woman um, who was in an older uh, age bracket. I was trying to say that, that really nicely. Well, no, that's what I imagine. I imagine the, the women that would pay for sex would be uh, 50, yeah. 60, a little bit portly. Me too. Oh, like someone, what? So this girl was 27. Poor well, this, hygiene. This girl was late 20s. Varicose veins. Oh, stop it. I have varicose veins. Does it stop hot. me from getting laid? No, I don't. Talk, I've, talk, <laughs> I've talked about varicose veins before. That's a, a, one, one of the okay, most enough. unusual porn search genres I've ever typed in. Okay, enough with the varicose veins. So the other woman that I spoke to was in her 40s. She was a professional. She was very time poor and she was paying for these experiences as nearly like a, you know, I don't have time for date. I still want companionship. I still want intimacy. So you do get certain stereotypes. The one that always surprised me is I've had a lot of male escorts tell me that one of their most common bookings is a couple. Yeah, right. Really? So a couple that want to explore a threesome and they find that it's safer being able to put specific rules on it with someone that they're paying. So they say, okay, we feel safer with an escort than just picking up someone else. And I, I kind of do understand that. If you were going to explore, mm. you want someone who understands boundaries. You know, but I was also able to talk to the male escort, which I loved. And I've got a flag. I was flirting probably the entire interview because he was just so captivating. And I got to sit with him in person and I could really see the appeal of paying him for sex. Mm. Well, it's, inter it's interesting because you hear a lot of the, like I've watched documentaries in the past where the women are paying almost for the boyfriend experience and the intimacy. But it sounds like this girl uh, who was 29 years old is literally strictly paying for it for the sex yeah, and then hoping and the to get back into the dating world and the education and getting the intimacy back in the real life. Yeah. She was using it to get a boyfriend. You know, you have those people that are using it for the boyfriend experience. You kind of felt like she was getting it to get into a relationship, to get that experience, to get that confidence. You know, as a woman, she said some amazing things about how it made her feel sexy, how she used these experiences to help her get over these body hang-ups. And when you hear her speak, you kind of can't argue with it. When the way that she articulated it, you think, why not? We seem to have accepted so much for men. You know, we talk about brothels all the time. They feel like they're on every corner. Why is it so wrong for a woman to do it? Not wrong, just weird. Because it's you not weird. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's not weird. Both of you could walk down the street right now no. and get late. You could ask five yeah. men, do you want to come back to mine? And they'd all say yes. Yeah, but you Unless they had a girlfriend. Like, you yeah. want it a good true. looking guy or you want a guy that's like the guy that I interviewed on the podcast, right? He was this beautiful human being who you could just look at and think he was going to root you sideways, right? <laughs> You know, like, that's what you're paying for. Not some drunken guy at a bar is going to slop up and down on top of you and be like, okay, I'm done. Five seconds later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What's wrong with the old vodka slop? It's one of our <sighs> best moves, guys. No, Danny. <laughs> 131060. Uh, if you've got a question for Dr. Nikki Goldstein, whether you want to weigh in on uh, the ladies paying for the sex, the old switcher yeah, route or not. paid for sex, call in because women don't really talk about it a lot. We'd so love to hear those. We'd love to hear love those to calls. Hear. Producer Jack thrown his hat in the ring with a question. Are you a girl who likes to receive dick pics? That was a, <laughs> that was a conversation that we had today. I that... love them. I think they're hilarious. But I show them to my friends, so don't send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> Unsolicited dicky peas. Yeah, if you send or them to me. Some. No or show us some. No one If you send them to me, no I have every right to be able to show them to my friends. This is true. 131060. Hey, if you've got a relationship question or a sexy question as well. A sexy question. <laughs> Take the next on the Danny Lakey Late Show. Danny Lakey Late Show, saucy content warning. The following content is of an adult nature and it may make some listeners blush, say, oh my God, or even cause offence. Feel free to turn the radio down in three, two, one. Dr. Nikki Goldstein. We're just talking just before Dr. Nikki Goldstein about the new episode of your podcast, Sex and Life, available to download on Podcast One right now, uh, about women who pay for sex, not the other way around, which is the more commonly one. Why are you laughing at this? It's bizarre. (laughs) It is bizarre. bizarre. I'm not saying it's wrong. It is bizarre. It's a big bizarre. Women can get sex whenever they want. It's not true. It is true. Well, it's... It is, for most it, women. It is true, it, it, but that's it, not what this is about. I'm, I'm not right? saying. I'm not saying it's about. I'm just like I'm allowed to think it's a little weird. Okay. Weird backwards bit. minded. Daddy I'm not a Lakey. backwards man. I'm all for it, mm-hmm. but it is a little weird. I'm mm-hmm. so confident in my acceptance of this new trend that at least I can admit it's weird. Okay. You look at me in the eye and say it's not a little bit weird. It's not a little bit weird. Interesting. She looked to the left. <laughs> I <laughs> did not. Anyway, okay. Julie, with you. Uh, you have paid for a male escort. Um, yes, I have paid for a male escort. Um, I've just been a single mother and I get all these demands off me all the time. Mm. And um, I just decided one day that I was going to have a male escort come around and make some demands of my own. Yeah, great. Was oh, it God, Was it the best sex you've ever had? Uh, no, it wasn't. But I made him do dishes and wash him. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Was it worth That's the money? Real foreplay. Is it worth the money? Are there, th- are there things you could get him to do that the average layman that you pick up in a bar would not? Oh, I just, you got to nag them and stuff. So mm. it's just way better when they just do it, uh, you know, you're paying for them and give them a couple of demands and do this and go on and do that. And What you did is pay for a cleaner and just had sex with him. Uh, well, it wasn't just the cleaner. I made him do a lot of other stuff. Clean but, other uh, things, Danny. Cleaned out more pops. <laughs> yeah, clean, <laughs> clean everything Julie, else did as you, well. Did you get him again or was it just a one-off experience? Uh, no, it was that two or three times, actually. Mm, see, yeah, Danny, it's it not was, so bizarre. It, it's, yeah, it's still a little bizarre. Like, you know, a I'm on a few chat sites and there's a lot of offers and stuff. It just made it different and more exciting. Yeah. And but, I could feel I could be a little bit bossier. Yeah. So. Julie, would, would you recommend this to other women who, in Danny's ways, don't want to just go out and have some random sex? They want a good quality experience? Oh, absolutely. They're like very caring and attentive and trustworthy and... Um, I felt safe having you in my house instead of picking a bloke up from a nightclub and bringing him home. There's my point, Danny. There is my point. Absolutely. Have I I misconstrued my nouns and my verbs? I agree. But I'm just saying it is a bit like, that's funny. But maybe the issue is that this should actually be more socially acceptable. We shouldn't actually be saying that this is so bizarre because we talk about it so commonly with men. So why not? have this okay for women if you know in this day and age when we're talking about consent and me too and boundaries here is a way if a woman wants Mm. fun and sexual pleasure with no strings attached that she's able to dictate the terms and have those boundaries in place it's just a little bizarre because a woman could dictate the terms on me for free oh but what guy do you know normally that you go to a bar and you'll bring him home and you'll say hey this is what i'm into and next thing you know he's trying to stick it where he shouldn't be sticking it nah not man no there's a whole heap of us that's nice what guys you do there. like it. what are mm-hmm. you talking about mm-hmm. like wandering fingers Shirley, how many times have you picked up a guy and he's crossed your boundaries 
Hundreds. There you go. Oh, hundred. Now, hundreds. now we know. Okay, now we're lying. So we're either, either Shuey Louie has picked up hundreds of men and taken them home, or it's she a lie. She might have. She might have. I definitely have not. Sky on the sunny coast. Uh, you've tried online dating, or you're, you're in it right now, and you've got two guys on the go, and you're interested in both of them, but you feel a little guilty seeing two different people, correct? Yes, that's true. I wouldn't feel guilty at all. I don't think you should in online dating. It, de- it depends. Have you been out on a date with both of them, or are you just chatting to both of them? I've been out on a date with one of them. There was no hanky-panky, but I had a really good time. And I'm yet to meet the other one, but having completely different work schedules, we just don't get a chance. Can I ask which dating site this was on, or is that too much information? Bumble. Okay, so I think these days when you meet somebody online, especially Bumble, Tinder, what's the other one, Blender, there is this assumption that you're talking to multiple people. So until you've had a few dates and you have that conversation of, hey, I don't really want to see other people, or the catch line is always, I've deleted my profile. Like that's a good way of saying, I'm not looking for anyone else, but I don't want to be a dork and have that conversation about, hey, are we seeing any other person? Um, then you're free to do whatever you want. The whole idea is that you need to explore and experiment. Sometimes it's good to have comparison. Yeah, you got a, you got a right to date as many people as you want until you're official and you have that conversation with someone else and they're on the same page. Definitely. 100%. Yeah, go for a third. Just don't Bumble mix up third, the names, though. That's what gets confusing. Get ten. Confusing. Yeah. Get ten. <laughs> Even look in your local adult classified and pay for a few male escorts, I say, just to really <laughs> open up the umbrella. Up because I'm all day. for it, guys, and it's not weird at all. Maybe there's just a money tree sitting in everyone's backyard. Oh, you know, this stuff is expensive, too. <laughs> it's like 50 bucks. Maybe the government should subsidise this for women. Yeah, thanks, Guy, for the call. And thanks, Dr. Nikki. Thank you, Danny. Well worth a listen at podcast1.com.au. And it's not bizarre. A little bizarre. It's not bizarre.